CITB in Scotland, in partnership with SBATC, developed skills tests on behalf of the construction industry. It's the final part of your apprenticeship and you need to pass this to become a qualified craftsperson and achieve your SVQ. Passing your skills test should not be too difficult. It's a way of proving that you're capable of doing your job and if you are, you should be able to pass the test. So here's what you need to know. You will sit your skills test within the last six months of your apprenticeship. There are test centres throughout the country, maybe even in your college, and both you and your employer will get plenty notice of where and when your test will take place. At college, you're assessed all the time on what you've learned and the skills test is just another assessment of your knowledge and hand skills. The only difference is that this test has been designed by CITB, SBATC and employers. The test has various elements and all are things you have been trained and tested on before in your phase tests and other assessments in college. Skills tests are based on skills required to perform the sorts of tasks commonly used on sites. This proves to employers that you can work competently to commercially acceptable standards and at a reasonable speed. If you don't pass your skills test, you will struggle to find another job as a qualified craftsperson or even get onto a site. It's really important that you do as much as you can to prepare for your test. You should download the Test Candidate Guide from the CITB website to familiarise yourself with the content of the test. You also need to make sure you carefully read the joining instructions you've been sent. You should speak to your employer as soon as possible if you feel you need any refresher training so that on the day you are confident and have the ability to pass. Make sure you know where your test centre is and how long it will take to get there. If you don't live near a test centre, don't worry, CITB and your employer will help you sort this out. On the day of your test, timekeeping is really important. If you are late, you won't be allowed to start the test. You'll be asked to prove who you are at the test centre, so you'll need to take photo ID with you. You also need to take your tools to the test. You'll get a list of what's needed from CITB. Don't forget to bring and wear the right personal protective equipment. If you don't, you'll be refused permission to sit the test. Before you start, you'll get a detailed induction and you'll be given a test booklet containing a description of the test. It's important that you read the information for each task before starting. Each task has a description, drawing and a list of the standards and tolerances that must be met in order to pass each element. What it doesn't tell you is how to plan the work, so you have to arrange your own work program. Only after you have read these notes and feel confident in what you have planned should you attempt the task. On the day, you will be allocated a test area and a stock of materials you need. If you are unclear on any aspect of the test, please ask the invigilator for advice. That's what they're there for. For your plastering skills test, you have 12 hours over two days to complete the test and you must attempt all tasks in the test booklet within the allocated time. The test consists of the following four areas. Board and skim sealing and duct. You will be asked to cut and fix plasterboard to sealing and ducting, then apply one coat lightweight finishing plaster. Lightweight plaster in two coat work to wall area. You have to apply plastering materials in two coat work using lightweight plaster to a specified wall area which includes a window. External render finishes to wall area and attached pier. You have to produce and apply cement sand and lime render a plain face and dry dash finish in two coat work to an attached pier face.
dry lining. You have to cut and fix plasterboard to attach the pier using direct dot dab dry lining system. The assessment process. Once you've finished and left the test centre, your test will be marked by an independent assessor appointed by SBATC. They use a marking schedule which contains the same standards and tolerances as the test booklet you were given. They then record whether you have met the required standards for each point. Your test result will be either a pass or fail. There is no grading system, but you will be given your score later in a letter. There's a national standard of testing in all test centres throughout Scotland, so it doesn't matter where you sit your test. It's the same test and test conditions for everyone. Here's an overview of some of the points your assessor will be looking for. For the board and skim ceiling and duct elements, the assessor will check that boards have been set out, cut and fixed correctly. Metal beads are secured and straight and level. The boarded area is plastered flat, straight and to a smooth finish. Internal and external angles are straight. For the application of two coat lightweight plaster element, the assessor will check that metal beads are plumb, square and aligned to the window opening. Finished plaster wall is plumb flat and smooth. Metal bead edges are clean and free from plaster. Finish to the reveals and soffit are square, parallel and troweled to a smooth finish. For the application of two coat, plain face and textured cement render finish element, the assessor will check that metal beads are fixed plumb, level and straight throughout their length. Finished, floated and textured surfaces are plumb, straight, square and to a uniform finish. For the dry lining fixing wall boards element, the assessor will check that boards are cut accurately and fixed securely to the background. Finished surface is plumb, straight and square that the beats are not damaged. After the assessor has marked your test, the schedule is then sent electronically to CITB. CITB then check that your marks are within the pass limit agreed by the industry, and if they are, you pass. You and your employer will then receive a letter confirming this in the coming week. If you fail your skills test, your letter will explain in what areas you need further supervised experience on site and possibly further refresher training in college. An application form to arrange a resit will be sent out, but you can also download it from the CITB website. However, it's important that before booking a resit, you think about the areas you've failed in and why. If you think you need more experience or training, speak to your employer or apprenticeship officer to arrange this. If you have only failed in one particular element and passed the rest, in some occupations, you may get the opportunity to take a partial resit. This involves only resitting that section. Once you have passed your skills test, you still have to complete the time served element of your apprenticeship to be a fully qualified tradesperson. Your SBATC registration form shows the date in which you will complete your apprenticeship. By this time, you should have achieved your Professional Development Award, Core Skills and all other units of your SVQ. This combined with passing your skills test means you would then receive final certification for your SVQ Level 3 and Modern Apprenticeship. You'll be fully qualified to work on a site in any country in the world, help you get any future employment or even start your own business. Finally, good luck when it's time to take your skills test. If you need any further information on skills testing, please look at our website, citb.co.uk.